this is sigma a and the omega m, and the two point is this one, and the three point is it's really hard to see, but the point is uh, three point can give you similar constraint as the two point correlation function, and um, and it's doable. They did not do neutrino mass, but people should do it in the future. Okay, four point has not been done, and we did not model them because three point is already so difficult. Four point, we just don't know how to model it anymore because there are so many bins, and we can't run unlimited simulations to model them, and they, they become also very noisy. That is why uh, people start to look into summary statistics where you just um, look at some uh, features of the map and hope all the higher order statistics are somewhat contained in that statistic. So one promising statistic people looked at is the weak lensing peak counts. I did not do intro on weak lensing, but think of it as the projection of matter along the line of sight with some kernel, but that's not so important for this talk. So looking at weak lensing peak counts, you're looking at very special regions of our universe. Here you're looking at all these peaks in your map, they're the over-dense regions in, uh, in their local uh, environment. And if you remember the two simulation plot I showed you with massive, uh, massive and massless neutrino, on large scale they're very similar, but ex it is exactly on small scales that they differ a lot. Well, I must be missing something because you're getting to the mass scale of neutrinos where the baryons make a comparable mm -hmm. contribution to the mass budget. And so mm -hmm. if you don't know how the baryons behave to, to good precision, Mm -hmm. You can get fooled by the peaks because it depends what the barons are doing in the peaks. That is a very good question, and that's kind of my goal here to understand wh what barons do and how can we break the degeneracy between them. Yeah, but I have not done that. People have tried that uh, before. Maybe I'll show you in the backup slide what people found so far. But uh, indeed, it is a worry. Okay, so we cleansing peak counts, and we hope uh, this can. Be, this is a very simple statistic. You simply scan through all the pixels in your map and pick out those pixels with higher value than the surrounding eight pixels. Very simple algorithm. So here I'll, I'm showing you peak counts. So this is power spectrum, just a matter power spectrum, not a weak lensing power spectrum, just to give you some idea. Um, here you're seeing the two two point or power spectrum as a function of scale, L. And then here you see three, cur uh, three curves. One is the fiducial, and then another three is if you change the three parameters by a little bit. And here I'm doing the ratio plot again. So you see that if you change the three parameters, the curve just shift almost just by amplitude with very subtle in their shape change. That is why you see some degeneracy of of neutrino mass with other parameters, where if you boost up the neutrino mass, you can compensate uh, by reducing the total mass content in our universe. So with peak counts, this is what we see as a function of the peak height or the value of the pixel. And this is a histogram of all the peaks you find. And this is what you typically see. And you see some long tail. Here are the really large halos in the universe, and here are the old slightly um, uh, smaller halos in the underdense region. And if you look again, if you change the three parameters, this is the shape you see. So no longer uh, up and down movement, there's some squeeze and then the tail changes. And then we hope combining this and power spectrum, you can constrain the parameter better. And let's just move on to show you the money plot. So this is a work led by Zach Lee, a grad student at Princeton. Again, let's just focus on this little one corner of this plot that I showed you earlier for bispectral as well. So neutrino mass and the uh, power spectral amplitude, sorry, uh, initial power spectral amplitude. Using the lensing power spectrum, this is what you get. And using peak counts. Aha, uh -huh, it's already improved compared to the bispectrum. So if you combine them, you pretty much get peak counts because uh, get what peak counts give you because it's already very small. So that tells us peak counts has information, not just the third order, but also something maybe from second order, even higher order. So it is a very powerful tool 
to constrain neutrino mass. And PCOMS has already done on data as well. Here are the few uh, weak lensing surveys, uh, DES kits and safe entry lens and uh, etc. And here are the measured peak counts from the DES science verification data. And here on the background, they plotted out the different models for peak counts from simulation. And you can use, uh, use this simulation to constrain what is the best fitted model for your observation. And similarly, this is done for case 450. So if you look at the constraint from all these surveys, this is what I did for a CFSG lens 2015. And then this is KISS and this is DES. Without going into details, we can already see that using two point and the peak counts, you get very comparable constraints or maybe even better with the peak counts. Again, this is not, uh, not including neutrino mass because current data are just not good enough to constrain neutrino mass, but in the future, peak counts will be very useful. Okay, we talked about peaks, the most or dense regions in our universe. The natural thing to, to think about are the opposite. Now, the voids. So this is the last result I want to mention about cosmic voids. So they are not new, but they are less uh, investigated in, uh, in this field right now. So very simple, cosmic voids are just this under dense regions in our universe. Okay, and then we want to see how neutrinos change them. So this is the work uh, I worked, uh, I collaborated with Christina Kreisch and Alicia Pisani, both at Princeton. So I want to show you the void size function. So in contrary to the halo mass function, void, there's no real mass of uh, the void, but rather how big they are. That's the equivalent to mass for halos. So this is the void size, and this is number of them, histogram of them. And in our universe, most of uh, voids are pretty small, and then there are a few large voids. If you increase the neutrino mass here, we found that you tilt this distribution. If you look at the ratio plot on the bottom, it is telling you that when you boost the neutrino mass, we see less large voids, but more smaller voids. So the threshold for deforming voids also depends on neutrino mass? I mean, like the critical over density that depends on neutrino mass? Like Sorry, could you repeat? The, 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 you know, you have a threshold to deform the void after a void, right? So I think that most people have done is for zero mass neutrino. Do you also correct for that? No, we actually go using void finder to go to different simulation with different neutrino mass to search for voids, using the exact same algorithm to search for voids. Yeah, but the threshold for defining the void should, define, should depend on neutrino mass, or you don't care? No, you, you don't depend. It's the same threshold where you, you say this is a void when it's certain under density. Yeah, but this is not true for other layer, obviously, but I think if you want to mention, I mean, if you want to go for the clustering in the presence of neutrino over density change, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and very much trivial, so I want to know whether you have work or no work. So these are voids in the number of galaxies, or voids in the, in the <laughs> mass density? So we, here, I'm just showing you in the matter uh, distribution, the so voids we found. the question is whether neutrinos are counted in your budget. No, no, it's not, uh, it's not, because uh, they're not really clustered, so you don't really use them. The neutrinos have modulated the density field, right? So right, you're kind of implicitly taking that into account. But the definition of a void does not care. So, um, this, so, in re so I'm just showing you some voids we find using the matter field. However, we only observe the halos or the galaxies. That will become more complicated. That will become a total different talk. But, and then, but you don't need to do that. I mean, first you can use the Lamar of the Taurus. But then you have to care about baryon, how baryon translate to right. translate but to the matter. The Lamar of the Taurus probes the volume. Mm -hmm. That could be a good probe for Yeah. But 
the problem with all the tracers, they have some bias themselves, and that bias will translate to the words you find. So the words will have bias that's uh, imprinted on your tracer bias. Yeah. So what is the biggest void that has been seen so far? I don't know. Maybe the big, big void seen by the CMB, yeah, if you believe in that. I want to know where in the scale. Ah. Because your curves are showing really large deviations out there. Block, right? Actually, I don't know if I even have big enough simulation to capture their big voids. I don't know how big they are. Because this is a huge difference yeah, compared yeah. to everything else you showed. Yeah. This looks like a really dramatic signature. Oh, so this is somewhat unrealistic. I know, still, yeah, yeah. still. That's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's probably where you want to go and compare with data. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Look, look at the, uh, axis, the vertical axis. You have one such void per gigaparsec cube. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right, but whether you get one or ten, right, right. that you can easily tell. So it seems to me that that is an interesting uh, result. Yeah. So within our observable volume, yeah, yeah, exactly. yeah that, that is a very good point. Yeah. yeah so voice can be indeed very promising too, but we have not translated to cosmology because of the limit number of simulations we have. And there are more subtle points about voice. We can talk more later. But I just want to um, put up my summary um, so we can have some discussion. One, massive neutrino suppress the growth of structure. Two, there are simulations that you can use to study more about neutrinos. It's all public, so please use them. Three, there's rich information in the nonlinear regime that is beyond two-point correlation function, and we should look into that. Thank you for your attention.